Five years ago, Chen Pingyin came to this world of cultivation. He had a system but he could not get stronger until he completed 1000 missions. Every task was a trivial matter and his rewards were things that can be used in real life. Even the fishes were system gifts. Sometimes, however, he would receive a crappy reward despite his wish to receive Wi-Fi and air conditioning. Despite his comfortable life, Chen Pingyin could sometimes felt he was tired. Right then, a system prompt appeared, a new task had been selected. He guessed he would need to make toys for kids or a couple might be fighting again. To his surprise, he was asked to go to the mountain sect. Chen Pingyin was immortal and believed he could not get in. Then he asked the system if it would give him a way to get stronger. The system answered that a man should be strong, giving him three months otherwise he would be wiped out once he failed. Unsurprisingly, Chen Pingyin had already expected this. In the past five years, he received all kinds of strange tasks, but now all of his hard work might go to waste. However, he was optimistic and believed he could handle the task. Later that day, he started walking on a mountain path when he suddenly remembered something. He did not know where the mountain sect was located. The system told him to be self-reliant to which he retorted he did not count on it at all. To his frustration, he was lost and could not find any clues since an immortal sect was usually hidden in the mountains. In the end, he decided to set tight and wait for something to fall from the sky. It was then that a girl fell out of nowhere while screaming for her life. The sound brought Chen Pingyin's attention and made him look to his side. Since his weight bore fruit, he proceeded to catch the falling girl. Looking at the smoke rising from the ground, he asked for an apology for failing to catch her. After the clouds of dust settled down, he saw the girl lying on the ground unconscious and he wondered why a beautiful girl, who he assumed to be a cultivator, would fall from the sky. After a while, the girl's face twitched. Soon, she woke up from her sleep, revealing her beautiful eyes. She immediately saw Chen Pingyin who kept poking her with a stick. The girl immediately retreated a distance away with tears in her eyes but Chen Pingyin claimed he did not do anything to her. It was then that the girl noticed something and her eyes widened in surprise. She suddenly fell to her knees while she called Chen Pingyin Sr. and begged for help which made him confused. Soon, another group of men appeared behind him. He fell into a panic and realized the girl was being chased. Seeing there were so many men around, Chen Pingyin whispered to the girl to run away. However, the girl kept on kneeling calling for him with a pitiful expression. Chen Pingyin knew her request was useless and he could not beat so many immortal cultivators since he was only immortal. At that moment, the group of men fell to their knees without hesitation. They asked for apologies for disturbing him. Confused, he asked them if it was for immortal cultivators liking to kneel. Back at his home, the chickens were wondering when would Chen Pingyin return from his trip. The chicken was embarrassed since it was a phoenix, it thought it was unlucky for not being brought by its master. The carp also complained that as a dragon, it still had to nest in the pit. They also thought about the kitchen knife who kept on shouting every day because of hunger and thirst, wanting to kill people all day. The chicken assured everyone that if the master did not want it to cut people, the kitchen knife would not dare. The scene changed and the woman who fell from the sky a while ago was now staring at Chen Pingyin with awe as she believed she was not mistaken and he was not an ordinary person. On the other hand, the group of men remained trembling on their knees. Chen Pingyin's pressure was so strong they could not get close to him and it was unexpected that the girl, Mirong Zhu, would meet such an existence. The men were terrified as one look at them made their souls feel they would be annihilated. All of them sensed the same, Chen Pingyin was a monster. Seeing their horrified faces, he was confused and stammered with his words. However, it was enough to drive the man to madness, and immediately pleaded to leave. Right then, Chen Pingyin realized they were good people. He put on a good face and asked the men to go away. As if their lives were pardoned, the group of men with tears in their eyes dashed away with gratitude. After settling the matter, the girl immediately pounced at him for a hug, thanking him for saving her life to which he clarified he did not do anything and he was only a mortal. The girl did not accept his words since a mere mortal would not be able to scare off four Jin Dan stage experts with just his Dao rhyme but the girl believed he had his reasons for saying so. She immediately agreed to his words and unconvincingly proclaimed him immortal. He cupped his fist at her and asked if she was Mirong Zhu, the holy maiden of the mountain sect. After she confirmed it was her, Chen Pingyin told her his plan to go to her sect and asked if they could go together. Mirong Zhu immediately pointed in a direction, excited to have the chance to experience the immortal's journey together with an extraordinary senior. While the girl excitedly thought of her future, Chen Pingyin smiled brightly upon thinking he had found a back door to the mountain sect and could experience a flight of immortal cultivators. Time passed by, and he turned impatient. He told the girl he was immortal and could only walk. He was silently expecting her to bring him to fly. Contrary to his anticipations, the girl proclaimed she would walk with him. Later, they reach a river where the girl started cultivating, leaving Chen Pingyin on the side with a bored expression. With constant rumbling, water began to gather and whirl all over her body. However, she failed to break through. The tamed whirlpool of water burst apart and turned chaotic. In the end, she was drenched, revealing the smooth skin under her clothes. On the side, Chen Pingyin was annoyed about not being able to fly. Hearing the girl's call for him, he immediately asked what was wrong. She walked over to him and said she had a favor to ask. Soon, she arrived before him. Seeing her appearance, he asked her if the problem she wanted help with got anything to do with water. 
The girl was amazed after his words, declaring she admired him for his wisdom. In his thoughts, however, she was making him unable to look at her due to her wet appearance. Appreciating the view, Chen Pingan was mesmerized for a few moments. Noticing his dazed look, the girl called out softly. Blushing, he said it was nothing and averted his eyes. The girl, on the other hand, was amazed by his mysterious ways of knowing her situation. She called out to him again and walked closer. She slid into his embrace and begged him to help her since she could only rely on him for a breakthrough to which he answered he could not involve in her private matters. He immediately gave her a cup of warm water and explained they would discuss what to do later. He expressed that immortal cultivators had many means to achieve a breakthrough to which the girl answered she could not ask anyone for help. The girl accepted the cup and she was stunned when she took a sip from it. It was then she thought deeply of the meaning behind his words and concluded that instead of observing water and awaiting enlightenment, she must be with water to be enlightened. Soon enough, a feeling of goodness surged within her and she succeeded in breaking through. She immediately kneeled and thanked him for his advice and in turn, she would never forget the great debt of kindness. With a helpless expression, Chen Pingin could only scratch his head in confusion. Later, they reached the mountain sect. Upon arriving, he discovered Mirong Zhu was the sect master's daughter which made him wonder no more why she could not even dry her clothes. He entered the back door and thought that even the handyman had to have qualifications to enter through the front door which made him happy. Inside a room, Mirong Zhu told her father, Mirong Yunai, about her journey. He asked her why would such a mysterious man wanted to join the sect. On the side, King Xuan, an elder of the mountain sect laughed and treat her words as a joke. Annoyance appeared on her face and declared she was not lying and even she too was shocked to know his desire to join the sect. Leaning he was outside waiting for their decisions. Her father told her to say no more since she must have been deceived by an unorthodox cultivator. He immediately stood from his seat and decided to deal with the liar. Seeing the irritated look on her father, she tried to convince him. Soon, her father stepped outside. His eyes flared up as he saw the man his daughter had brought. He remembered his daughter's words then the man's whole body was emitting key to which she asked him if he could not see it. Looking at Chen Pingan, Mirong Yunai's voice of disbelief sounded. Proclaiming the man in front of him was not only emitting key and it was more like his body was nothing but pure key. Seeing Mirong Yunai approach him with large strides, Chen Pingan knew it was the sect master. With a courteous smile, he greeted Mirong Yunai. To his surprise, the sect master bowed deeply and proclaimed he had committed a sin deserving death for letting him wait outside. Believing he was only a mortal, Chen Pingan fell into a panic after noticing the daughter and father pair was overly respecting him out of nowhere. When she saw his flustered face, Mirong Zhu whispered to her father and informed him that the senior was cultivating his mind as a mortal for restraint and it would be better to agree with his words than to anger him. But after seeing his look, her father felt it was unacceptable to think of Chen Pingan as a mortal. Eventually, Mirong Yunahi introduced himself and confirmed Chen Pingan was joining his sect. Chen Pingan applied to be a handyman as long as they would allow him to stay in the sect. Mirong Yunai immediately denied Chen Pingan's request which the girl angrily contested. With a baffled expression, Chen Pingan wondered why the girl was more anxious than him. Right then, a brilliant expression appeared on Mirong Yunai's face as he declared his choice of resigning from his position as the sect master, proclaiming Chen Pingan as his replacement. His words stunned Chen Pingan and made up his mind to brand Mirong Yunai as crazy. Hurriedly waving his hands, he declined the position bestowed to him. This time, a solemn look appeared on their faces, realizing the position of sect master was not good enough for the senior to accept. Mirong Yunai coughed and said he would not be polite. Chen Pingan accepted readily and hoped he would not be kicked out otherwise his mission would be ruined. However, his worries were unfounded after the sect master declared he would be the only sect ancestor of the mountain sect. To his frustration, Chen Pingin could not help but scratch his face, realizing immortal cultivators were difficult to communicate with. Although he could not cultivate, he had heard about the hierarchy of a sect. He was just immortal and not only to be an ancestor but he would not be even qualified to be a disciple. After thinking for a bit, he decided to persuade them. Right then, Mirong Yunai turned around and requested Chen Pingin to proceed to the hall, declaring the matter is settled and the senior would now be the sect ancestor. Suddenly, Mirong Zhu grabbed her father's sleeve. She expressed that her uncle was in the hall and had the same attitude as him before and it would be bad if he disrespected the senior. After hearing his daughter's words, he immediately dashed away, leaving Mirong Zhu to entertain the senior. Pointing at the sect master, he asked the girl if there was an internal emergency to which she hesitantly affirmed. Later in the hall, King Xianjiang was staring at the treasure in his hand with an interested expression. Right then, seeing Mirong Yunai had returned, he immediately asked if the liar was sent away. Mirong Yunai hurriedly grabbed his shoulders and explained that the senior's strength was unpredictable, further asking him not to be disrespectful later as the senior was already the ancestor of the sect. With an alarmed expression, King Xianjiang was in disbelief after seeing Mirong Yunai was also fooled. He immediately stood from his seat and dashed outside to the liar with an annoyed look on his face. The moment he stepped outside, his eyes flew open in horror. He saw Chen Pingan walking as though he was an immortal who came down from heaven. His knees gave in. Kowtowing with sweat trickling all over his body, he asked forgiveness for not welcoming the great master. After he witnessed the elder's embarrassing situation, Mirong Yunai could not help but laugh at him. 
within the Elder's mind. He was wondering why Murong Yunai's luck was through the heavens for catching a mighty existence. Chen Pingan, on the other hand, felt his intelligence insulted after seeing so many immortals kneeling in front of him, wondering if it was a courtesy between cultivators. Eventually, he thought it was likely and asked if he should also kneel causing everyone's expression to change. They hurriedly grabbed Chen Pingan and stopped him from his act. Right then, the elder's treasure fell. It bumped toward Chen Pingan's way. Picking it up, he suddenly asked where did you get it? The elder explained that the illusory moon sect disciples had encountered found out that it was an object with an unknown material, and they could not open it. Chen Pingan scratched his cheek and said the material was just ordinary wood and inside was only food. Hearing his words, everyone asked him if he could see what was inside. Chen Pingan answered he did not have that skill and explained that he knew about it because he was the one who made the thing. Right then, he remembered the past when he was given a task to make toys for the children. He decided to find some wood and make some lube and locks. Back to the present, Chen Pingan explained that the mechanism was broken which was the reason why no one can open it so he could only open it in another way. After searching for a while, he brought out a terrifying knife which immediately spread a destructive aura around the room. Looking at the knife, everyone felt their lives flash before their eyes. Horrified looks were painted on their faces as they instinctively took a step back, realizing the knife held greater power than immortal weapons. At that moment, everyone finally realized Chen Pingan was holding a legendary artifact. As the knife hit the wooded treasure, everyone felt the world rumble as though everything was on the brink of collapse. The elder was so shocked at the sight, he felt the laws of the world had collided. Soon, the wooden treasure was opened, revealing the mystery inside. Chen Pingan turned his head and with confusion, he asked why everyone was hiding far away. They did not answer his question and wondered what was the thing inside to which he explained that it was a candy and he made it as a reward for the children after they opened their toys. As she brought the candy near her nose, Mirong Zhu discovered a strong spiritual power. Full of curiosity, she immediately swallowed the candy. Right then, a surge of energy flooded her body and she advanced from the first level of pill formation directly to the tenth level. She hurriedly took his hand and thanked him for her helping to save her life and for guiding and giving her a chance to break through. With a hint of shyness on her face, she asked him if she could repay him with her body. Smoke burst out from his nose and his face turned red. The girl was beautiful and her figure was good and now, she was offering herself to him just because of his candy. A moment later, Chen Pingan decided to decline after thinking her father might not agree and declared he did not need her body on such a trivial thing. Mirong Yunai, however, was happily giving his approval and believed his daughter's offer was the best way to repay him. Realizing the girl's mentality stemmed from her father, Chen Pingan resolved to bring her to the right path. He explained that chastity was not something she should give just because of his candy. The girl replied that after he came to the mountain, he needed a servant. At that moment, she pounced at him and expressed her intention to be his maid. Seeing Chen Pingan's hesitant face, sadness overwhelmed the girl, and she questioned if she was really bad looking. Glancing at his side, Chen Pingan saw her father's thumbed up, expressing his blessing. The elder on the side turned demonic and asked Mirong Yunai to stop since they agreed to make his daughter the elder's daughter-in-law. To the elder's frustration, Mirong Yunai asked the elder to snatch his daughter if he had the capability since he could not prevent his daughter from her desire. The elder seated in anger after seeing Mirong Yunai kept a great god in his sect. Right then, the elder thought of his son and maybe he could also offer him to the senior. As if sensing the elder's sinister thoughts, Chen Pingan could not help but tremble in horror. Chen Pingan felt his body turn cold and wondered what weird things the elder was thinking about. After hugging each other for a while, he asked the girl to let go of him. Contrary to his request, the girl tightened her hug and declared she would never let him go. Looking at the system display, Chen Pingan could only sigh after discovering there was no normal person in the sect the system threw at him. Fortunately, his task to join the mountain sect had been completed. Chen Pingan then discussed his job and found out he was only needed once the sect made some important decisions or encounter unsolvable difficulties. In the end, Chen Pingan directly asked if they could fly him back home. Later, they brought Chen Pingan back to his home with the teleportation formation. However, seeing his depressed expression, Mirong Yunai was shocked. Although they traveled so fast, in the senior's eyes, it was as slow as turtle speed. Unknown to them, Chen Pingan was complaining inside how the speed was too fast and he did not feel that he had flown. Walking inside, he asked everyone to come and have tea before they leave. Sighing in relief, Mirong Yunai asked if he could arrange a better place to which Chen Pingan politely declined since he could not leave his fish and chickens. Right then, the surrounding aura intensified. The chicken revealed a glimpse of its might. Everyone's eyes widened as they felt their bodies freeze in terror. Noticing their unsightly expressions, Chen Pingan asked if something was wrong. While wiping away their cold sweat, they answered Chen Pingan they were alright and only felt out of breath for a moment. Realizing it was a bunch of weak humans, the chicken turned its head away in boredom. Chen Pingan hurriedly proceeded to prepare tea and asked everyone to tour his courtyard while they wait. Everyone pleaded for Chen Pingan not to go but their cries were all for naught. Horrified looks appeared on their faces as they realized it was all over. They had never experienced what they had witnessed today. A peach tree that was surrounded by ki. A fish pond surrounded by ki. Chickens surrounded by ki. 
Even the broom rhymes with Ki. It was a whole courtyard overflowing with Ki. Looking around, Mirong Zhu was terrified and her father believed the senior was testing them so they needed to hold on. At this moment, with all the terrifying treasures around, Everyone was at the end of their ropes. A second later, an expression of pain appeared on Mirong Zhu's face. She felt her chest tighten and called for her father with great difficulty. Right then, Chen Pingyan's light cough was heard. In an instant, the terrifying entities in the courtyard broke into cold sweats. The pressure they emitted vanished without a trace and everyone immediately felt relieved. Mirong Yunai suggested they should check the ancestor even though he volunteered to prepare their tea. Everyone agreed to him and proceeded to walk inside. After he opened the door he saw Chen Pingyan who was choked by the tea and called out for him. Chen Pingyan told them to sit down since the tea had just been brewed. Turning around, he saw everyone's pale expressions as sweat trickled down their faces. He wondered if they had done some exercise in his yard. He thought about it and concluded they would not be so tired since his yard was small. Looking at the girl's tired appearance, Chen Pingyan assumed she was the culprit. With a slight blush on his face, he dismissed his thoughts and poured everyone's cup of tea. The energy fluctuating around the tea gleamed with heavenly radiance capturing everyone's mind. They assumed the tea was some kind of elixir and its might should be comparable to the ancestor's kitchen knife. As he brought the tea and took a whiff of its aroma, he was instantly invigorated. Everyone's spirit was lifted. The spiritual root determines the speed and purity of spiritual energy absorption. Without hesitation, Mirong Zhu drank her tea. Seeing various expressions on their faces, Chen Pingan wondered if something was wrong with his tea's taste. The next second, no one waited no more and drank their tea as though they had been dehydrated for many years. Soon, everyone asked for a refill. After they heard their ancestor saying there was not enough, everyone felt their hearts ache and cried in despair. Chen Pingan scratched his head and reasoned he had drunk all the water and now there was nothing left. The elder suddenly smiled and reached for his storage ring. The next moment, the elder raised his hand, proclaiming the water had arrived. Anger appeared on Chen Pingyan's face and sent everyone out. Outside, he waved them away and said drinking too much would be bad for their health. After they bowed and thanked him for his teaching, Chen Pingyan looked at their departing backs and wondered what he had taught them. Now that they were out of his sight, he sighed and decided to go shopping in the town for some food to eat. In another place, the sun blazed with scorching heat. An old man glanced at the sky and noticed a sign of epiphany. He was the former ancestor of the mountain sect and at this moment, he decided to watch the sun for a chance to break through the bottleneck. Right now, he could not make any mistakes. Soon, the sun was moments until its apex. The old man cleared his thought and focused his mind. Right then, his chance had come and he was almost there. At that moment, however, a loud voice called out, resulting in him vomiting a mouthful of blood. The old man's aura surged chaotically as he heard the man who arrived proclaim he brought some great news. The man was Mirong Yunai, and after noticing something amiss, he carefully asked the old man why he was upset. In an instant, the old man unsheathed his blade. With anger bursting uncontrollably in his heart, a golden silhouette of a roaring lion materializes on his back as he charged forward, proclaiming he had bad news for Mirong Yunhai. Mirong Yunhai was beaten by his father and his screams could be heard from miles away. Jang Kingxian and Mirong Zhu were awkwardly watching from the side, thinking the old man was happy to see his son. Soon, the beating stopped. Mirong Yunhai told his father that the senior could help him break through. His father sat tiredly. He told that his cultivation was destroyed by Mirong Yunhai. However, he was unconvinced so his father dared him for a bet. Everyone then agreed and each of them announced their net worth as their bets. Their confidence alarmed Grandpa Mirong. Seeing him fall silent, Mirong Yunhai dared him again. In the end, he slapped Mirong Yunhai's face and asked him to lead the way. Soon, they arrived outside Chen Pingyan's courtyard. Grandpa Mirong was disappointed at the shabby place. Learning that Chen Pingyan regards himself as a mortal, Grandpa Mirong commented it was only a play of a liar. He stepped inside. At that instant, his body trembled and his eyes flew up in despair. Mirong Yunhai and his daughter immediately called out to him with worried faces. Grandpa Mirong fell on his knees, discovering he had entered an immortal's residence. He was horrified as the pressure made him unable to move. Suddenly, a bright light appeared out of thin air. A red-haired man dashed toward everyone. The chicken on the side was startled and immediately asked the man to stop. The red-haired man missed Grandpa Mirong, who was dumbfounded by a hair's breadth. Before he could stop, his momentum generated a whirlwind. Amidst the smoke, Mirong Yunai recognized the red-haired man. It was Chen Pingan's kitchen knife. Grandpa Mirong, who had just witnessed his life flash before his eyes, wondered what kind of treasure was the kitchen knife. Kitchen knife wanted to cut Grandpa Mirong since he concluded he was not a good person and it would be better to cut him off. The chicken answered that the old man was a fool and after being but, he would become more stupid. When the kitchen knife lets Grandpa Mirong go, he was shocked after seeing something beyond an immortal weapon and the chicken, which is supposed to be the king of beasts, the phoenix. Soon the kitchen knife closed his eyes. He turned into a wisp of light, and he warned Grandpa Mirong to behave or he would be killed. 
Before Grand Pomurong could reply the kitchen knife went back inside. Grand Pomurong immediately bowed at the chicken for its mercy. On the side, Murong Yunai asked his father about the bet. With an annoyed face, Grand Pomurong approached his son. With a slap, he scolded Murong Yunai for not caring for his father's life. Murong Zhu immediately calmed Grand Pomurong and told him to bear with it and wait for the senior to come back. Outside, Chen Pingyan saw the group had returned. However, he did not want to make tea for them. Thinking of this, he wondered if he should hide. Murong Zhu noticed some movements nearby. She turned to look and saw Chen Pingyan who was walking the other way and called him. Chen Pingyan looked back, asking why they came back so soon and if he could do something for them. Murong Zhu then showed her grandpa to him. Seeing grandpa Murong kneeling on the ground, Chen Pingyan was alarmed since the old man was the true ancestor of the mountain sect. He could not afford to offend the old man, so he quickly walked over. Murong Yunai noticed Chen Pingyan approaching and warned his father to control himself once he saw the lingering key around him. Grandpa Murong turned his head and noticed someone. However, his whole body instantly trembled. He was stronger than everyone around and noticed the key of Chen Pingyan all over the place. When Chen Pingyan greeted Grandpa Murong, the old man kowtowed at the same time. It was another mess. Chen Pingyan immediately helped the old man stand. Despite the pressure, Grandpa Murong now understood that Chen Pingyan wanted to cultivate himself as a mortal. After settling the old man down, he invited them inside. Everyone was excited to drink another cup of tea. It was then Chen Pingyan showed them a basket of vegetables. He would make a meal this time. Murong Zhu was instantly delighted. At the dining table, everyone had a pouty face. Embarrassed, Grandpa Murong told them he will pay them once they went back. Murong Yunai replied he did not care about the spirit stones. Suddenly, Grandpa Murong felt tremendous suppression, and his head was forcefully smacked down against the table. He realized he had touched a pitcher which was a treasure. After carefully looking around, he discovered that the table was filled with treasures. Murong Yunai immediately laughed, making the old man erupt in anger. And in the end, he was helpless. This time, Chen Pingyan sneezed, and the meal was almost finished cooking. Nonetheless, he was choking because of the pepper. Outside, Murong Zhu immediately smelled the aroma. Jiang Qingxian then felt an incredible power bursting within him. And the next second, he had broken through. Everyone was in disbelief. They greedily smelled the aroma and found it filled with aura. Soon, the meal was served. Everyone was immediately mesmerized. Chen Pingyan hoped they would be polite. But right now, he had a bad feeling. Fortunately, he cooked a lot of rice. He went to get the rice with a happy smile. But when he came back, he was immediately petrified. Everyone's mouth was filled to the brim. And after seeing him, they instantly requested another bowl. Their words had now pissed him off. He was confused and shocked. The girl did not even pay attention to her image. And soon, all the dishes were swept clean. The rice was also devoured. Everyone's stomach was now filled to the brim. He was thoroughly petrified as he looked at the plates which were licked clean. Everyone also had a breakthrough in their respective cultivation. Grandpa Muron could not help but be emotional. He immediately kowtowed to express his gratitude. But Chen Pingan was confused, and told Grandpa Muron that what he had done was not worth gratitude. The old man was immediately excited and asked to eat his food again. Now, he was totally annoyed, so he directly threw them outside. Muron Yunai told his father not to say such a shameless thing. As a result, the old man sent him a slap. He was only excited and accidentally said such words and he was assured that the senior would not be angry. Unknown to them, Chen Pingan was tremendously angry for their shamelessness. He did not even take a single bite of rice. In the forest, the old man then walked away and told everyone to cultivate. Everyone behind immediately laughed. He was further embarrassed. Fortunately, his granddaughter agreed with him. Although within his mind, he knew how good it was to only eat and become stronger. The old man instructed to tell the sect members about the new ancestor. Right then, John Kingxian received an emergency message, telling him not to return to the sect. It was his father's voice. Grandpa Murong thought it was the thousand words of secret voice. Zhang Kingxian affirmed and said it was the most urgent contact method of his sect. In the Illusionary Moon sect, thunder rumbled and lightning flashed in the sky. A man wanted to bury the old man in front of him with his sect for destroying his legs. Zhang Sheifeng, now on his knees, reasons he only punished the man for annihilating a whole village and did not kill him directly. The man questions if he was not afraid to die. Zhang Sheifeng answers there was no harm in death. He was glad since his son, who was not present today, would avenge him. But right then, his son happily called out to him which made him throw up a mouthful of blood. He immediately scolded his son, asking if he returned for dinner. His son answers it would be unjustifiable for him not to come after such an event. Then he mysteriously smiles. The one who came was only in the first stage of the divinity realm. 
His father was confused. Even the man on the flying platform believes it was not easy to call another divinity realm person like him. But the next second, his heart pounded out of his chest the moment Grandpa Murong appeared on his back. He questions who it was. Grandpa Murong extended his hand. It blazed and he placed it on the man's petrified face. The flame then erupted, leaving the man helpless. Zhang Shaifeng then asks his son who the man was. It's Uncle Murong who is in the same realm as the man he had killed. Grandpa Murong stepped out of the mess. He tells everyone it is fortunate he came in time. Zhang Shaifeng then realized it was his fellow and asks how he became strong. With a nostalgic look, he prepared to start a long story. But when he remembers he lose the bet because he did not believe at first. He is embarrassed. He could only tell directly about an immortal living within his sex jurisdiction. And after eating the immortal meal, he achieved a breakthrough. Zhang Shaifeng wanted to see the senior. Grandpa Murong asks why his friend did not suspect. He then answers that his son's power had increased despite being trash and with their years of friendship. He would believe his words. Grandpa Murong tells him that he just left the senior's house and it would not be very good to bother him. Zhang Shaifeng reveals a face full of doubt. He asks if he was being lied to. But they suddenly felt a sudden change. The spiritual pressure startled everyone. Grandpa Murong realized it was coming from the senior's place. He was excited to have another dinner and grabbed his friend to go. They immediately disappeared on the spot. Left alone, Zhang Kingxian could only wish to be taken. In Chen Pingdin's yard, the chicken detected some trouble. It then heard the sounds of the old men whispering to each other. Zhang Shaifeng asks why he always talked about the dinner in the senior's house. He then looked at the sky. It was a huge hole called Kai Quake and a secret cave might appear. It would produce a secret realm and raise the entire town to the ground. He wonders if the senior did it. Grandpa Murong denies it since the senior cultivates as a mortal. He then turns around to leave, deciding to save as many people as possible. Right then, a rumble sounded on the pond within Chen Pingan's courtyard. The old man immediately looked back. This time, a dragon's head emerged from the pond. The next second, it flew outside, charging toward the black hole in the sky. The dragon coiled in but the black hole. Zhang Shaifeng was amazed. Grandpa Murong tells him there was also a phoenix together with it. He was stunned in place. Only an immortal emperor can command both terrifying entities. In a nearby forest, the space rippled. A sword then emerged out of it. It escaped from the immortal world. Right then, Chen Pingan found it. The sword thought he would be crushed by its aura since he was just a mortal. But the next moment, the sword was shocked. Chen Pingan held it with ease. And after taking a good look, the sword was frightened. Chen Pingan was a terrifying entity in its eyes. The sword wonders how could there be a strong man in the mortal world. Noticing the sword's trembling, he thought it was a magic weapon. He put it in his basket and sell it later for a good price. The sword was insulted since many strong people wanted to serve it in the past. Seeing the medicines were only first grade, the sword was further disappointed. It now believes Chen Pingan is just a mortal. It further thinks that since it was injured, it was easily picked up. But right then, the sword was stunned. The Ho looked at it as though it was an ant. Chen Pingan notices his basket's movement. He wonders why it moves around. Inside the basket, the Ho told the sword not to move. The sword immediately followed the command, addressing the Ho as the big boss. It then realized that the Ho was an artifact. Chen Pingan glances at the sky and also notices the black hole. Nearby, the old men and other cultivators approached the black hole while riding on their flying swords. Right then, the black hole buzzed. Grandpa Murong immediately stopped everyone. The next second, the hole widened, and a pillar of light beamed toward the ground. Chen Pingan saw this scene and wonders if it was the so-called secret realm. A new task appeared. He hoped it would not ask him to solve the situation. Contrary to his expectation, it was only a lottery reminder. He was relieved. Knowing it was not related to the beam of light, he decided to draw. The button lights up. A small portal materializes before him. After the extraction, a flute then appeared. He was happy to receive the item. Deciding to try it at home, he put the flute in his basket. The sword immediately noticed the flute, it was another artifact. He could only pray that everything was an illusion. In Chen Pingan's home, his things were in a corner. The sword was now petrified. The whole hose was full of artifacts. The peach tree was greater than the ones the immortal emperor owns. Goldfish in the pond was stronger than his dragon. The chickens were stronger than his phoenix. Chen Pingan's tools looked at the sword with disdain, declaring they would destroy it if not for their master. After hearing that the sword insulted their master as immortal, another pot scolded the sword angrily. On the corner, the sword could only beg mercy for being silly. In the nearby forest, Yurong Zhu chanted a spell. She then delivered a punch. However, her attack shatters after hitting the pillar of light. She immediately grunted in pain. 
Grandpa Murong tells her that even a second level of the Divinity Realm will be powerless against it. He then wonders if a secret word is needed for its entrance to appear. Zhao Sheifeng thinks it will be troublesome and asks if they should inform the senior. However, Grandpa Murong believes that the senior wants them to solve it by themselves. He then says that later, the senior will probably come. At that moment, the air around them changes. Everyone is startled by this sudden gust of wind. In Chen Pingan's house, he is complaining about the noise. Annoyed, he could not sleep and threw a tantrum. Hearing his master's sleep is troubled, Kitchen Knife decided to stop the disturbance. He then transforms into his humanoid form. Now, he has a mission to accomplish. The gust of wind continues to whirl around the pillar of light. Everyone immediately saw the incoming figure and thought it was the senior. Unknown to them, Grandpa Murong already knew it was Kitchen Knife. After he arrives, he is surprised to see the pillar of light. He finds it interesting but he decides to destroy it nonetheless. He then gathers terrifying energy in his finger. The next second, a spirit sword shot through the sky. The crimson beam slashed at the pillar of light. After this, he discovers the pillar of light was trash. It easily cracked and fissures spread. Everyone hurriedly shields themselves from the shockwave. A terrifying force blasted the ground open. On the crater, a ball of light is seen amidst the smoke. Inside the ball of light, someone was held by chains. Suddenly, all her chains start to break. After a moment, she opens her eyes. Once she sat upright, she immediately smiled. Outside, Kitchen Knife immediately notices something unusual. While everyone is excited to check out what is inside, Zhao Sheifeng discovers a frightening aura. And soon, everyone felt a devil's arrival. A delicate hand emerges from the ball of light. This scene immediately surprises Kitchen Knife. Eventually, she came out. She has arrived in the Tianyuan realm. Grandpa Murong was shocked after seeing the immortal girl. The next moment, however, he becomes excited after seeing another immortal. This time, Murong Zhu grabs her grandfather's sleeve. After asking what to do, Grandpa Murong tells her that only the kitchen knife is their hope. He says hello to the little girl. He slowly approached her and asked about her identity. She is immediately angered after being called out. She jumped into the air, and she charged toward him with the intent to kill. He immediately chanted a spell, and cast it at her fist. Her attack stops midway and a hate-filled expression appears on her face. While smiling, he tells her that her cultivation is rubbish. Everyone is stunned by this sudden statement. He decided to probe her memories. The light flashed before her eyes. Her past was then revealed. She was facing a cruel man when she was a child. The palm strike hit her and she heavily fell. Kitchen knife showed a hint of pity in his eyes. Right now, the girl has lost consciousness. He instructed everyone to keep everything a secret. And if something gets out, the consequences would be dreadful. Grandpa Murong immediately accepts the command. He believes that the girl would be thoroughly investigated. Looking at his granddaughter, he instructs to tell all disciples to keep the event secret. She worriedly receives the instructions. Since the area is devastated, she wonders if they could hide the news. Kitchen Knife comes back. The chicken immediately asks him why he brought the girl. He did not answer and called out to the peach tree. Its leaves rustled, and then it transforms into its humanoid form. Upon seeing the girl, her eyes suddenly widened. She was shocked after discovering the girl's past. A flower began to materialize in her palm. Soon, the flower bloomed. It was placed on the girl's head. After a moment, it enlarged and engulfed the girl inside. The girl's chaotic aura started to subside. Right then, the immortal sword took a peek outside. Its eyes instantly widened in surprise. The girl it saw was Su Ling, the immortal emperor's daughter. Time passed and the girl woke up. At that instant, the peach tree and the chicken find the girl cute. She wonders where she is. The peach tree taps the girl's forehead and says she is now in her home and the master will be her big brother. When the sword witnessed the scene, it inwardly laughed, thinking about the immortal emperor's situation right now. In the immortal realm, a token placed on the table emitted some mysterious smoke. The immortal emperor discovered her daughter had regained consciousness. He decided someone to find her. A group of men arrives before him. He commanded everyone to find his daughter and the reward will be that world's throne. Warning came into Chen Pingan's house, but he is still slumped on his bed. It has been a while since he slept like a log. Right then, a small hand reaches for him, asking him to wake up. He opened his eyes and was surprised to be called brother. A cute girl appeared before him, telling him the sun was at its peak. He scrambled backward and asked the little girl's name and why she was in his room. The little girl introduced herself as Su Ling and her home was here. He thought the girl meant her home was his small town's location and he finds it impossible since he had not seen the cute girl in the past.
He then taps her head and tells her he would take her to find her parents. As they are going out, he reminds her to follow him and not get lost. She approaches him and holds his hand, asking if he's alright. He is fine with it and he brings her to town asking her to show him the direction of her house. An hour later, he is dumbfounded. They arrive at his house again. He immediately asks her if she remembered her parents' appearance, but she answers negatively and was about to talk about the peach tree. On the side, the peach tree immediately breaks into a cold sweat and hurriedly throws a stone. It hit the little girl in the head, making her cry in pain. He was alarmed and asks her if she was okay. He immediately thought she hurt her head in the past and caused confusion in her memory. The little girl pouted and sadly asks him if he did not want her anymore. He hurriedly pats her head, denying her words, and decides to take care of her until her parents come. Right then, a voice was heard outside, asking if he is home. After opening the gate, Grandpa Murong introduced Zhao Sheifeng who wanted to meet the senior. Zhao Sheifeng cups his fists and greets Chen Pingan, thanking him for his grace. He now verified the truth of how powerful the senior is. Chen Pingan scratches his face, wondering what is the meaning of the old man's words who he did not meet before. He thought that another person had come to his place. Su Ling breaks his thought and asks him who they were. Grandpa Murong is surprised and asks who is the little girl. He happily introduces her as his sister and an ordinary person like him. After his urging, the little girl then greets everyone. The old men were stunned after seeing another powerful person. Seeing the girl's aura, they could not believe she was just an ordinary person. She looks a lot younger than Mirong Su who is the youngest genius in town. The old men believe the girl is another immortal cultivator. However, Grandpa Murong thinks it is normal since they are siblings and he could only imagine how powerful their parents are. Chen Pingan then invites the old men to eat and says it is fortunate since it is only the two of them so the food will be enough. Jia Sheifeng politely declines, claiming it will be shameless to eat at the senior's house. But Grandpa Murong was quick to respond and agreed to Chen Pingan's invitation, covering his friend's mouth. Afterward, they entered the courtyard, and Su Ling immediately offered to cook for them. At the dinner table, Chen Pingan is surprised to know that the little girl knows how to cook and wonders how will it taste. He then reminds Grandpa Murong that there is a child and he should be mindful of how he eats. Grandpa Murong is stunned and as Zhang Sheifeng teases him, he retorts at his friend, telling him to control himself later if he has the ability. Right then, the aroma pervaded the air, and Su Ling came out with the meal she cooked. After opening the pot, a brilliant light shone from within. Zhang Sheifeng immediately wonders if it is the legendary heavenly treasure. Later, both old men slump on their seats with their bellies bulging. The two devils finished another sack of his rice. Although he is unwilling to admit it, the girl's cooking skills are much better than his so he asks her where did she learn to cook. She answers that she did not know but finds herself able to cook a lot of dishes. Hearing this, Chen Pingan is happy after thinking he did not need to cook again. The plate is even crying in joy after tasting a real meal. On the side, the kitchen knife could only complain about the noise. In the dining hall, Zhang Sheifeng finally breaks through and reaches the first stage of divinity. Grandpa Murong is not only comfortable with the meal's good taste but it also solidified his cultivation. His tears trickled down his face as he remembered her granddaughter and thought she is so inferior to Su Ling, making him extremely envious. He grabs Chen Pingan and demanded an exchange, making another mess. In another place, Murong Zhu suddenly sneezes. She wonders who is scolding her and thought of her father and grandfather who are gone when an important matter has cropped up. She then looks at the sky. The huge floating ship has arrived. After landing on the ground, the Imperial Princess Luo Lanking came down and greets Murong Zhu. She greets back and compliments Luo Lanking, saying she is getting more and more beautiful. Luo Lanking then approaches closer, looks at the massive breasts, and points out that Murong Zhu is getting bigger and bigger, making her blush. Right then, another man comes down, he is Luo Sheaji. Annoyance appeared on Murong Zhu's face and asks the man why he came and immediately warns the princess to stay away from him. Luo Sheaji quickly defends himself, saying he is a good man, and then whispers to Murong Zhu that he would bully her again if she acts tough. Murong Zhu pouts and retorts that she could beat him now and dares him to bully her again if he has the ability. Thereafter, she released a glimpse of her aura, making Luo Sheaji jump back in surprise. He falls down on the ground and stammers, asking her why she is so strong now. With a smug look on her face, she insults him for being weak against her despite being one of the top three geniuses in the kingdom. Right then, the princess grabs Mirong Zhu's hands and asks her if the matter of her getting stronger is related to the spirit sword which made Mirong Zhu confused. Luo Lanking then reveals she came searching for it. She explains that a while ago, she came to an auction with her father and that night, they admired a mountain from the top of her attic. 
It is said that the mountain is a local attraction with countless natural treasures and resources and is also the basis for the development of the city. However, a spirit sword suddenly passed across the mountain. Luo Lanking is dumbfounded and guesses the sword is deployed by a high-level cultivator when practicing martial arts. It cut off countless peaks but its power remained unchanged. She adds that not only she but many strong cultivators have arrived in order to search for the spirit sword. Mirong Zhu awkwardly reveals that it was not a spirit sword but sword intent sent by the spirit sword. Her words immediately made Luo Lanking's eyes sparkle. Mirong Zhu then looks at Luo Sheaji and hummed with annoyance. She grasps Luo Lanking away to talk, leaving the man begging to come with them. And as they flew away, Luo Sheaji could only call for them with immense sadness. All flying. Mirong Zhu tells the story about what had happened and completely forgot to keep the event secret. Luo Lanking is in disbelief after hearing the news. After the princess asks if she is lying, Mirong Zhu denies it and decides to take the princess to meet the senior. Right now, Chen Pingan sits in his courtyard with a flute in hand and wonders if he still remembers the tune since it has been a long time since he played it. Suddenly, Mirong Zhu's head peeks at the gate and asks for permission to come in. He agrees and asks her the reason for coming. Mirong Zhu called Luo Lanking but right now she is completely scared. She senses the powerful eyes watching her and feels her whole being has been seen through. Mirong Zhu pats her shoulder to comfort her, assuring her that they are invited so they would not be harmed. She then pushed Luo Lanking forward and introduces her to him. Luo Lanking reveals a bashful look and stammers. She greets him and thought Chen Pingin really has a high cultivation level. She expects him to be a gray-haired old man and never thought he would be so young and handsome. Chen Pingin asked the girl to relax and she did not need to be polite to him. He thought that although he is being called senior, he really did not have the slightest strength. Behind the peach tree, Su Ling's head pokes out, asking who the visitors are. Seeing the little girl, Mirong Zhu immediately asks who she is so he introduced Su Ling as his sister. The little girl greets the older sisters with a cute look on her face. Both of them are shocked at how strong his little sister is. But at the same time, they find her cute so they immediately hug her together. On the side, he coughs awkwardly, thinking it is not good to look at them despite it being a nice view. So he decides to continue his focus on his flute. And after a moment, he played the flute, and mesmerizing melodies spread in the courtyard. And it immediately caught Mirong Zhu's attention. She felt the melodies in her hands. Luo Lanking realized that the melodies produce peak premonitions. The immortal sword heard this tune and is immediately startled. After listening for a while, its injury is almost healed. It did not expect Chen Pingin to also know premonitions and thought the artifacts are all there for his tunes. It believes that as long as it stays, it would become a divine artifact so it decides not to leave and become the strongest artifact. The broom is enraged by the sword's mutterings and scolded it to shut up and stand aside. The sword could only quiver in terror, obeying Big Brother's command. Su Ling cheerfully claps and compliments Chen Pingin. Making him happy, Luo Lanking feels her strength and discovers she advances by so much with just a song. Mirong Zhu also got stronger and learns she did not understand yet how powerful the senior is. The girls sincerely bowed at him for his grace but their gesture puzzles him, because he did not remember giving them any food. Right then, a hint of bashfulness appeared on Luo Lanking's face. She says she could not repay for the great kindness but she stammered on her words. He expects what she would say and waves his hand, telling her he has no need for her body. Eventually, Luo Lanking could only walk away in depression. She scolded herself for thinking an immortal would want a lowly mortal like her. Right now, Chen Pingin is carefully analyzing the situation. He admitted he is too handsome so the girls kept offering their bodies to him. In the forest, Luo Lanking kept on crying after her first confession has been rejected so Mirong Zhu comforts her, saying the senior is immortal and it is normal for him to look down on them. Sensing the subtle meaning in her words, Luo Lanking asks if she confesses too but Mirong Zhu hurriedly denies it and reasons she is not so shameful to say such things. Right then, Luo Lanking reaches for her sleeves. She brought out a sound crystal she bought from an auction and reveals she recorded the song on it. Mirong Zhu praises her brilliance and suggests finding a place to listen to the song again. Later, powerful tunes are emitted from the recording stone, and the girls are diligently meditating beside it. Mirong Zhu breaks through again and she could not help but exclaim they could become an immortal faster if they keep on listening to the tune. Luo Lanking is also amazed and decides they would break through in one fell swoop. But this time, the sound crystal emitted a dazzling light. Luo Lanking hurriedly throw it away and at the next moment, it exploded with a loud boom. The black smoke lingered and flooded the area, and their clothes are immediately torn apart. Luo Lanking discovers the residue is corroding their clothes. This time, both of their gorgeous appearances turn to ruin. 
In another place, Luo Sheaji snorts and mutters he is one of the three great geniuses in the kingdom so the girls could not get away. He opens his hand and the princess's location is revealed. After staring for a while, he wonders why the girls are staying in the same area for a long time. Suddenly, he was shocked because their location and his tracking technique disappeared. Right then, the girls in tattered clothes sneakily ran behind him. Nyurong Zhu steps on a tree branch and it snaps. Luo Sheaji hears the sound and as he turned around, he immediately noticed both of them. With a surprised expression, he asks them when did they arrive. Nyurong Zhu quickly points at him, demanding he turns around as she threatened to kill him. His face reddened and then noticed both of the girls' strengths has improved a lot. As they climb the stairs in a panic, Luo Sheaji believes their strength increased in the place they stayed for a long time so he resolves to go there and see for himself. Later, he arrives outside Chen Pingan's courtyard. Stepping inside, he mutters the place is not a big deal. But right then, the entities in the courtyard gleamed with powerful radiance. The surge of energy pounced at him and Luo Sheaji immediately defended himself. However, he was quickly brought to his knees. He wonders what monsters would be so powerful that their aura could make him feel like he is being buried alive. But after a moment, he licked his lips, thinking it feels so good. Seeing the excited face, the chicken was instantly dumbfounded. The broom on the side even wonders if the man had some kind of fetish. In the forest nearby, Chen Pingan and little Su Ling just finished gathering some medicine, and since they dug a lot of yams, he decides to make snacks for the little girl later, instantly making her happy. As they arrive at the gate, he was confused to see Luo Sheaji kneeling at the entrance. He wonders if he just trips over something. He asks Luo Sheaji if he is okay. After Chen Pingan helps him to stand up, he notices that the suppression stopped at once and realized the man in front of him is the courtyard's owner. But when he raises his head to look, his eyes immediately flared up. He quickly fell to his knees again, pays his respect, and asks forgiveness for trespassing in the senior's yard by accident. With narrowed eyes, Chen Pingan asks if he is a relative of the Murong family and since they visit him often, the mistake should not be taken to heart. Luo Sheaji's eyes sparkled. He is sure Mirong Zhu did not mention him but the senior knows his information just after a glance, making his deduction ability terrifying. This time, Chen Pingan wonders if a kidney deficiency is a family-inherited disease since everyone in the Murong family who came to his courtyard sweat a lot. Su Ling then appears on the side and tells Chen Pingan she would go in first. Seeing the little girl, Luo Sheaji is horrified once more. Walking away, the girl hummed in disdain at Luo Sheaji. He is instantly terrified and greets the little girl as his senior, prompting Chen Pingan to get irritated. He grabs Luo Sheaji's hand. After helping him to his feet, he tells Luo Sheaji not to overwork since his body is weak and he should also maintain a balance between cultivation and rest. Observing he is unstable, Chen Pingan further suggests not to kneel for too long, saying there is not always a golden coin under a man's feet. Luo Sheaji cups his fist and thought of Chen Pingan's words, and believes it is the senior giving some advice and clues to his problem. Although he is one of the three geniuses of the royal city, and his strength is similar to the other two, he always has been suppressed by them. The most important difference is he did not have a martial art to support his body, and thinking about it, he discovers the senior is guiding him. Golden energy starts to whirl around his chest. It expands outwards as he concentrated, filling his body with mysterious ki. On the side, Chen Pingan is startled by the man's unusual moves, and the next second, he flew into the air with gusts of wind surging all over his feet. Chen Pingan is in awe of the powerful display of martial arts. On the air, Luo Sheaji is amazed after creating three martial arts in one go, and although it is instructed by the senior, it is still a great feat that could only be achieved by a genius such as him. Suddenly, Chen Pingan shouts are heard from below, telling Luo Sheaji to go back and pay attention to balance in life, make his body healthy, and not to kneel for too long and cause his blood to not circulate. The words puzzle Luo Sheaji and he mutters if something is wrong. Right then, a sudden burst of energy interrupted the wind on his feet and nearly made him fall. He discovers there is a problem with his new martial art. Without hesitation, he flies away, thanking Chen Pingan for the advice. Looking at the disappearing figure, he wonders if reminding someone to invigorate the kidneys is also considered advice. Later, Chen Pingan and little Su Ling go out and while they were walking, he asks what she would like to eat. The girl happily answers watermelon which leaves him in confusion since she is asking for it again. Suddenly, he hears a couple of cultivators talking about a girl's location. After being asked if the girl is near, the other cultivator also answers it is true and many others have come to the place to investigate. Seeing this scene, he is baffled why many cultivators have appeared. 
In the courtyard, the peach tree blames the kitchen knife for his actions which caused the cultivators to appear all over the place. The chicken also adds that if the people explore their place, their master's peace would be destroyed. Seeing kitchen knife remain silent, the fish points the blame again, asking the kitchen knife to solve the problem. In annoyance, Kitchen Knife could only condemn the Immortal Emperor for being rubbish, the trashiest Immortal Emperor he has ever seen. But the Master did not ask him to go so he could not go out now. Behind the door, the Immortal Sword peeking outside heard the words and is thoroughly amazed at its big brother's confidence. In the flash, Kitchen Knife appears before the sword and greets it with a smile. As the sword hid for his life, Kitchen Knife asks it to do something. Seeing that its injuries are almost recovered and it is now able to transform, Kitchen Knife commands it to go out and assess the situation and lead the others who came to explore elsewhere. The Immortal Sword wants to cry but tears won't come out, so it could only plead to turn back. But Kitchen Knife firmly holds it down with a menacing aura. In the end, the Immortal Sword helplessly salutes, receives the orders, and declares to complete the task. And after a moment, a golden light streaks through the sky. Meanwhile, in the devastated place, the Immortal Sword arrives and assumes everyone would trace the damage from here. Since this is another ruin flattened by the beam of light from the Immortal Realm, the place will catch attention. The sword suddenly glows and transforms. Afterward, he determines to raise the place. In a flash, countless sword strikes are sent. The area is in complete ruins and the chaos has spread throughout, leaving devastation in its wake. He appears to be fulfilled and finds joy as he destroys the place more and more. At this moment, a group instantly sees the commotion and recognizes him as a humanoid celestial artifact. Immortal Sword also detects their arrival and smiles, when everyone wonders if they can catch the immortal treasure to be invincible in the world. The leader of Tianzin Tower called Long Aoshin replies he has a solution. He shows the treasure, Sleepy Immortal Formation and together, they can activate it and trap the immortal treasure. Everyone immediately agrees to cooperate, and whoever the immortal treasure chooses as its master depends on their respective chances. At the same time, Immortal Sword appears to be interested in their plan. Wang Aoshin gestures a hand seal and a magic circle appears. Consequently, a vast magic circle appears on the ground beneath Immortal Sword. It has been a long time since he sees such a formation and is looking forward to it. Two hours later, he grows bored. One of the old men falls to his knees as he can't hold on anymore. Another's key is also exhausted and he is on the brink of collapse. But they persevere until the end. They raise their hands together and channel their last bit of key. On the other hand, Immortal Sword feels annoyed watching them struggle with insufficient key and rubbish cultivation bases. He could not help but ask them if he should let himself be trapped. It is worthy of being an immortal treasure so long Aoshin clenches his teeth as his key is about to be drained. Fortunately, the immortal treasure did not leave and as long as his formation is working, he will have the best chance to be recognized as its master. Right then, the formation is finally done. Long Aoshin braces himself for the last push. Chains abruptly come out from the formation. Countless of them envelope Immortal Sword at the center. The next second, he is bound, rendering him unable to move. Long Aoshin joyfully celebrates his success. Unfortunately, it is not enough. Right now, it is time for Immortal Sword's debut. Within a second, the chains break and the formation collapses. Long Aoshin falls to his knees. The likes of him could not subdue the immortal treasure at all. Immortal Sword then declares he does not kill ants and he came down to find a destined master. He points at the mountains from afar, revealing he will show up on the mainland one month later. For the one who is destined, he will be the world's number one and he will get a place in the immortal world. He promises as he thought it will be enough to lead them away. Amidst the cultivator's fearful gazes, Immortal Sword flies away. As soon as he left the area, everyone sighs in relief, death just passed by, even making one of them piss his pants. They decide to leave supporting each other to spread the news. Long Aoshin helplessly sighs at how big the world is. He thought someone who could rival him in the mortal world does not exist, but now he realizes it is only his ridiculous illusion. When he remembers his hometown is near, he decides to visit it since 100 years have already passed. Meanwhile, Chen Pingan's door slowly opens. Immortal Sword then peeks inside and called Big Brother, reporting the matter has been settled and the mortal cultivators will never come again. Kitchen Knife voices his praise and warns him to morph into an ordinary weapon otherwise he will be obliterated once seen by the master. Immortal Sword feels horrified as he asks if he would be killed once he is seen using immortal power. Right then, the door opens again, making the Immortal Sword jump in fright. He hurriedly turns into a sword and stations himself in the corner as Chen Pingan and Su Ling entered inside. Looking in the sword's direction, Chen Pingan feels strange and wonders where is the axe he bought last time. 
At the same time, Immortal Sword notices Chen Pingyun's key has disappeared. He wonders if it is because of the cultivator's sudden influx so he hid it. Right then, Chen Pingyun glances at the sword. He picks it up and mutters he would try it today which makes Immortal Sword confuse. Soon, however, he realizes he would be used for chopping down trees. Meanwhile, in a broken house, Long Aoshin has a sense of nostalgia. He did not expect his old house to be still there. Hundreds of years have passed and his parents have already passed away many years. Right now, he is also old. However, after his return, he can still recall the good old days. Suddenly, his cultivation increased and he discerns cultivating the heart is also important for breaking the bottleneck. He used to think that cultivating hard is the right way but now he finds it wrong. After a moment, he walks away, saying he does not belong in the place anymore. He then pauses and softly bids his parents goodbye. At this moment, he is determined to fulfill his promise to them back then, to become the strongest on the continent. Later, Long Aoshin hears someone's soft grunts. Before his eyes, Chen Pingan chops a huge tree with a single slash. At the same time, Long Aoshin is shocked to see the immortal treasure. Chen Pingan on the other hand holds the immortal sword closer as he admires how it is so convenient to cut trees with it. Long Aoshin falls into a stupor after seeing a man chopping wood with an immortal weapon and he could not help but wonder if he is hallucinating after being hit too hard a while ago. Similarly, the sword is in disbelief and his lifetime of wisdom in the immortal world becomes useless in an instant. He thinks it is fortunate that no one saw it but before he could finish his wishful thought, he immediately sees someone's presence. His anger erupts as he sends a wisp of energy to attack Long Aoshin. Consequently, the man falls in his butt and figures out that what he sees is not an illusion. Chen Pingan then sees him. He throws the sword as he approaches the old man with worry and asks if he is okay. Instead of answering, Long Aoshin is shocked to see the sword being tossed away. He stands and asks why he is using such a weapon to chop wood so Chen Pingan answers it is useless and now it is not. In the end, Long Aoshin falls into his butt again. He is shocked beyond belief. After Chen Pingan picks up the last wood, he invites Long Aoshin to his house to sit down for a while. However, his eyes are on the immortal weapon. Although the person before him has some sense, he did not have the slightest level of cultivation and appears to be a fool who treats an immortal weapon as an ordinary tool. Long Aoshin feels confused and wonders if the immortal weapon recognizes him as its master. If that is so, he is baffled why it is not angry despite being used to chop wood. Right then, Chen Pingan exhales as he tightened the rope on his firewood. Afterward, he points at the sword and asks Long Aoshin to retrieve it. He expresses uncertainty and asks if it is okay. Chen Pingyun smiles and replies it is alright, telling him to be careful not to get cut. However, Long Aoshin believes getting cut is not the problem. He feels he will be killed once he touches it. After a moment, he decides to hold it since it is an immortal weapon. He grabs it by the hilt, considering no one would decline such a request. Immortal Sword instantly erupted in anger, preparing to slash Long Aoshin's neck. He closes his eyes as he desperately pleads for his life and reasons its master has requested it. Right then, Chen Pingan's light cough is heard and the sword immediately calms down, stunning Long Aoshin. Chen Pingan then says his throat is dry after working for half the day. Afterward, he turns around, telling Long Aoshin to follow him. Looking at his figure, Long Aoshin could not believe he can make an immortal weapon obedient, and is curious about who he is. In Chen Pingan's courtyard, the immortal sword is left alone with piles of wood. On the other hand, Chen Pingan invites Long Aoshin to his house as he excuses for its shabbiness. However, Long Aoshin is instantly taken aback and his eyes widen in astonishment. With a respectful bow, he immediately cups his fist and introduced himself as Long Aoshin. When he thought of it, the immortal sword is the most useless existence compared with the courtyard and it appears to him that Chen Pingan is cultivating his mind since if he is just immortal, then Long Aoshin will be worse than an ant. At that moment, Chen Pingnan grumbles why he is called senior when a while ago he is a young man so he approaches, telling him not to be polite, and at the same time, he assumes Long Aoshin is a cultivator and asks if he knows the Murong Palace. As soon as he heard the words, Long Aoshin is filled with amazement. The founder of his Tianzin Tower comes from the Murong Palace but he knows he ascended thousands of years ago. When he thought that Chen Pingan has figured out he is the current leader of the Tianzin Tower, Long Aoshin exclaims in admiration. However, Chen Pingan shows no concern and believes acting as such is the case for those related to the Murong family. Chen Pingan then calls for little Su Ling so she pokes her head out and shows an excited expression at her brother's return. She also greets Long Aoshin and addresses him as grandpa, making the old man stupefied. The girl is so cute but also so strong. 
Meanwhile, Chen Pingin asks for the watermelon but the girl did not want to share it so he pats her head and he tells her not to be selfish. She glares at Long Aoshin as she invites him to come in. Upon seeing little Su Ling's undisguised hatred, he starts to think twice if he should enter. He could only think of a compromise. It is getting late so Long Aoshin reasons he would leave first since he has something important to do which makes Chen Pingin perplexed. Long Aoshin cups his fist and emphasizes the urgency once more. So Chen Pingin did not force him to stay and instead asks for a treasure that can lower the temperature. Long Aoshin replies he has one and claims it might not be a treasure in front of the senior's eyes. However, as long as it can cool down the temperature, Chen Pingin is fine with it so he asks if it is for sale but Long Aoshin replies it is of little use and he will bring it tomorrow for the senior. Chen Pingin is pleased and invites Long Aoshin to a meal again. However, little Su Ling's fierce glares frighten him. Flustered, he hastily waves his hands and states he has something important to do. Without hesitation, he takes his leave and flies away. Su Ling appears delighted for sending the old man while Chen Pingin is surprised as to what matter is so important. The day passes and the next morning comes. Chen Pingin opens his eyes to Su Ling's wake-up call. However, it is so early and he begs her to let him sleep a little more. The little girl pouts and states his promise to buy a dress for her. Having remembered the task, he decides to leave his bed and go with her. While they walk away, the immortal sword is excited upon their departure. He is tired of keeping his disguise all the time. Right then, he notices some unfamiliar energies. Above the sky, another small group of cultivators has arrived. It appears that his yesterday's treatment of them is not enough. Thinking he should make his big brother satisfied, he flies away, saying he will be back. The kitchen knife notices something is not right. It appears to him that the situation is unusual. Meanwhile, in the sight of destruction, Immortal Sword finds it strange since he feels the newcomers but he sees no one around. Right then, someone reveals he can smell a familiar scent in the mortal world. Immortal Sword is shocked to see the other party. Unpleasant memories resurface in his mind. The face of his attacker is the same as the one before him. It is a man with the Golden Plume Immortal Artifact. While Immortal Sword is somewhat at a loss, the man expresses his greetings. He then realizes, he is from the Blood Moon sect. With so many mortal worlds, he believes it is impossible to find his exact position so quickly. Upon being asked how he did it, the man reveals Immortal Sword has his key and Danchen marked early on. As long as he uses key, he can be traced through spells so concedes it is because of his yesterday's blow that leaked the energy. He underestimated their degree of desiring him so he determines to run away. But his plan is seen through as the man draws out a talisman. He gestures a hand seal and activates the imperial imprisoning array. A golden beam flashes from the sky, entrapping immortal sword within. He falls to the ground and his knees turn numb. It is the same familiar array customized to overpower him. If it is not for the sealing array to hinder his key, trash like the man before him and the trashy sect behind him could not have done anything to him. The man laughs and retorts that despite being trash he can make an immortal sword powerless, unable to resist, making surrender the only option. Immortal Sword shows his pity for the ignorant garbage as he reveals that there is a mortal in the world far superior to anyone. The man feels surprised and questions the meaning behind his words, so Immortal Sword confirms it with a smile. He has never seen the strength of anyone close to Chen Pingan. Even if he can't reach their level, he feels it is already a luxury to follow them. Immortal Sword forces himself to stand. He arrogantly postures and insults the man as just a scum on the ground, not good to be called rubbish at all. The man's expression twists in annoyance and gestures a hand seal. The sky twinkles with brilliance. Afterward, a beam of light descended upon Immortal Sword, it is the skill called Hour of Judgment. It pierces through his chest, causing him to spit a mouthful of blood. As expected, he discovers he is still not qualified since the senior would have intervened by now if they want to save him. He knows the big brothers are unable to leave the yard because of the restriction. It appears to him that his end is about to come. Meanwhile, the peach tree emphasizes they can't go out with the master's orders but that is something he knows already. Leaving the yard without permission won't just turn them into a mortal but will also completely destroy them. So the chicken convinces Kitchen Knife not to be reckless. However, despite knowing the consequences, it is he who sent Immortal Sword. So even if he dies, Kitchen Knife resolves to save him. A moment later, a twinkle of red light can be seen in the sky above the ruined place. The red light zooms into the ground, causing debris to fly away. The man is shocked to see someone with such a strong aura. Within the center of the cloud of smoke, Kitchen Knife appears. When he gets angry, even the gods and Buddhas have to kneel down but now a little worm from the immortal realm dares to incur his wrath. Slumped on the ground, Immortal Sword worriedly called out to his big brother. Kitchen Knife questions how can a rubbish formation trap him. 
Without waiting for a reply, he flicks the formation. Afterward, a shockwave spreads all over the place as the formation shatters smoothly. The man frightfully proclaims he is the elder of the Blood Moon sect in the Immortal Realm and questions Kitchen Knife for intervening in his business. Kitchen Knife's finger erupts with a powerful wisp of energy. A word beam flash as he questions the man if he is even worthy. Within a blink of an eye, the man's head bursts into nothing. Immortal Sword is worried because his big brother came out but Kitchen Knife shuts him up, telling him to come back. The words stun Immortal Sword in place. After a moment, a warm current flows into his heart and he smiles gratefully. Back in Chen Pingyan's courtyard, everyone waits in front of the door. Anxiety is painted all over their faces. Meanwhile, Kitchen Knife can be seen kneeling inside the house. There is an apparition of a lady before his eyes. You broke the taboo, she utters with her back against him. At the same time, in the Immortal Blood Moon sect, an attendant addresses a man as the sovereign as he reports Yu Hu's life card explosion. The man is astonished upon hearing the news. He wonders who can kill a person from the immortal realm and after thinking it is about the one who could break a light beam from the immortal emperor, he believes it should be someone comparable. He suddenly smiles, it seems that he will soon be able to share the world with the immortal emperor. Meanwhile, Chen Pingin returns to his courtyard with little Su Ling as he asks her if she has fun buying a bag full of new clothes. Su Ling is delighted and answers it is a great day. Waiting at the gate, Long Aoshan greets them. Chen Pingin is surprised to see him and asks why he was waiting outside so Long Aoshan replies it is difficult to go in. He then brings out the topic of the thing that could lower the temperature as he presents the mysterious sky ice crystal Chen Pingin desires. He is instantly delighted and suggests Long Aoshan should come and sit inside when he comes again. Entering the courtyard, Chen Pingin further insists on Long Aoshan's stay since yesterday he is in a hurry. Outside Chen Pingin's courtyard, a brilliant golden light suddenly descended. The source of the light was none other than the Immortal Emperor himself. Puzzled, he questioned why he was unable to sense the cultivation base of the Immortal Realm that he had just detected moments ago. With this thought in mind, he cautiously pushed open the door to the courtyard, wondering if the answer lay within. What he saw inside left him completely astonished. Meanwhile, Long Aoshan is enjoying the benefits of his meals, which are specifically designed to improve his cultivation. Notably, even the tea he is served has the potential to enhance his spiritual roots. After drinking it, Long Aoshan is surprised to find that his bottleneck has disappeared, and he realizes that he has been given a tremendous opportunity. He wonders if Chen Pingin is expressing his gratitude for the crystal by providing him with these special meals. Looking at the crystal, which is being used as a freezer for watermelons, Long Aoshan remarks on the peculiarity of Chen Pingin's methods. However, Chen Pingin did not expect the crystal to be so effective, and he has been wanting a refrigerator for quite some time now because he finds iced watermelon to be particularly delicious. Chen Pingin places the watermelon on the table and encourages Long Aoshan to eat it without hesitation. However, Long Aoshan begins to have second thoughts when he notices that little Su Ling is glaring at him with undisguised hatred. In response, Chen Pingin hits Su Ling on the head and reprimands her for being rude to their guest. He also warns her against eating too much iced watermelon as it can cause diarrhea. Su Ling sadly holds her head and agrees to abide by Chen Pingin's instructions. As Long Aoshan reached for the watermelon, he declared he would help himself. Afterward, he held the watermelon close to him and stammered a thank you. Given that he believed the tea and meals were magical, he assumed the watermelon must be too. Taking a bite of the watermelon, an explosion occurred within his danshan, which is a sign of a breakthrough to the Earth Immortal Realm. Surprised by this sudden change, he wondered how an ordinary watermelon could have such an effect. It crossed his mind that it might have been the powerful kitchen knife, and when the watermelon was cut, it was infected with the key of the kitchen knife. At this moment, the kitchen knife felt very slimy and uncomfortable, wondering when he could take a wash. After finishing the watermelon, Long Aoshan thanked Chen Pingyan for the opportunity and the unpayable great grace. He promised to do his best in the future as his breakthrough would produce a huge burst of energy. Furthermore, he couldn't afford to provoke Chen Pingyan by destroying the house. So, he stood up, said he had important matters to attend to, and ran away, making Chen Pingyan ask why he was anxious again. As Long Aoshan opened the door, he saw a man kneeling on the ground in front of him and wondered who he was. The immortal emperor noticed that Long Aoshan was unaffected by the pressure of the yard and tried to call out. However, Long Aoshan didn't wait any longer, passed, and asked for forgiveness, stating he was not free. While Long Aoshan's back was departing, the Immortal Emperor looked at him and realized he was about to break through into the Earth Immortal Realm. However, he didn't seem to be the master of the place. Chen Pingin called out to Long Aoshan and asked him not to run far, as there was a toilet in his home. When the Immortal Emperor heard Chen Pingin's voice, he was instantly shocked. 
he looked at Chen Pingan, who resembled the body of the Tao. At this moment, the immortal emperor realized why the yard was full of terrifying existence. As it turned out, he had accidentally broken into the treasured land of an expert. However, he wondered why such an expert would be in the mortal world. Surprised, Chen Pingan asked the immortal emperor why he had stumbled into the yard, wondering if it was because the threshold of the home was too high. In disbelief, the immortal emperor saw the Taoist rhythms of the immortal emperor on Chen Pingan. He wondered if he was in a game of chess involving hundreds of millions of lives, where people were the chess pieces and the world was the chessboard. It seemed that two seniors were simply playing, and he was just a pawn to them. Chen Pingan wore a worried look as he asked about the immortal emperor's condition and inquired about any possible injuries. He also expressed his intention to change the threshold later. Since the immortal emperor was wearing luxurious clothing, Chen Pingan believed he was a powerful person and did not want to provoke him. The immortal emperor introduced himself as Zia Sui and Kowtowed, which shocked Chen Pingan since he was also a cultivator. When Chen Pingan heard the name Sui, he found it familiar and asked if the immortal emperor was looking for Su Ling. The immortal emperor, in turn, asked if Su Ling was inside. Although hesitant at first, Chen Pingan eventually thought that he should give in since he assumed that the father had come to the door and he did not want to be perceived as a kidnapper. Firstly, he helped the immortal emperor to get up. Subsequently, they entered the house. Afterward, Chen Pingan pointed at Zia Sui and asked Su Ling to check if he was her father. However, Su Ling claimed she had never seen him and had no memory of him. Consequently, Zia Sui was full of questions and asked if Su Ling was really his daughter. In response, Su Ling replied she did not know him. Chen Pingan stared at Zia Sui and asked what the matter with him was. Eventually, Chen Pingan asked if he was really his father, but Zia Sui stammered and felt conflicted. When asked about Su Ling, Zia Sui explained that she had been cursed by a ruthless immortal venerable. As a result, he had no choice but to trap her in the secret realm for thousands of years. Zia Sui then wondered if the seniors counted the fate of each chess piece, but he knew he was just an insignificant ant and Su Ling was merely a pawn to them. Feeling frustrated, Zia Sui clenched his fist and declared that he would not hide the fact that he had been separated from Su Ling for a while. Believing that Su Ling should be more mature, Zia Sui couldn't help but have doubts about her appearance. Chen Pingan noticed this and questioned why Zia Sui didn't even remember his own daughter. This made Chen Pingan start to doubt Zia Sui's identity as Su Ling's father, and he asked where her birthmark was. When Zia Sui answered that Su Ling had a snowflake-like birthmark on the back of her neck, it turned out to be correct. This revelation shocked Chen Pingan, who then realized that Zia Sui was actually Su Ling's father. After tapping her head, Chen Pingan asked Su Ling whether she wanted to stay or go with Zia Sui since she didn't have any memory of her father. Su Ling chose to stay, and Chen Pingan suggested that perhaps her memory of Zia Sui was missing after they separated. He then asked Zia Sui if he would be willing to let Su Ling stay with him. Since Su Ling was at the right age to study, Chen Pingan offered to take care of her and share his knowledge with her. Zia Sui was surprised by Chen Pingan's generosity and willingness to teach Su Ling everything. Zia Sui kowtowed and expressed his gratitude, while Chen Pingan replied that Zia Sui didn't have to thank him. Chen Pingan also wondered why Zia Sui was trying so hard and thought that perhaps Zia Sui had heard that he used to teach in the town. Meanwhile, in a forest nearby, Long Yashin's aura was surging. He made a hand seal, and his energy burst outward, uprooting all the trees around him. With the breakthrough successful, he finally stepped into the Earth Immortal Realm. At that moment, Zia Sui approached and expressed his congratulations to Long Aoshin for the breakthrough. After Long Aoshin cupped his fist, he expressed that during the senior's visit, he was on the verge of a breakthrough and thus could not fulfill the expected courtesies. He hoped for the senior's forgiveness. In response, Zia Sui offered reassurance that the issue was not a problem because they both shared a relationship with the senior. Moreover, he suggested that if Long Aoshin was interested, they could refer to each other as brothers. Long Aoshin agreed and thought the relationship was even better than getting an immortal artifact, making his trip here not a loss. Zia Sui held Long Aoshin's shoulder and told him to inform him when he reached the immortal realm. Long Aoshin got the guidance of the senior, and Zia Sui was sure that he would break through the infant immortal realm very soon. Zia Sui gave Long Aoshin a token as their meeting proof so he could go to any big city or clan when he shows it, or he could directly come to the immortal empire to meet him. Long Aoshin introduced himself and asked Zia Sui's name. Zia Sui introduced himself and added that everyone in the immortal realm calls him the immortal emperor. Long Aoshin commented that Zia Sui's name was good and even repeated his compliment twice. However, he suddenly snapped when he realized Zia Sui Sui was the immortal emperor. Later, Zia Sui returned to the immortal realm and was still in disbelief as he could now see his daughter with Chen Pingan's help. 
Even though he was only allowed to visit once a month, he praised Chen Pingin for being a good person. Right then, Xiao Zhao, the sovereign of the Blood Moon sect, appeared. Upon his arrival, he cowed out as a greeting, prompting Zia Sui to ask what had happened, as he couldn't believe that Xiao Zhao had actually come. In response, Xiao Zhao replied that he wondered if the immortal emperor had found Fairy Su Ling. Nevertheless, Zia Sui walked away, leaving Xiao Zhao behind. He answered that he had not found her yet, causing Xiao Zhao to exclaim in surprise. Despite his shock, he offered to send help and declared that she must be found. However, Zia Sui sent him flying and sternly told him to get out. After Xiao Zhao crashed into a pillar, producing cracks all over it, Zia Sui reminded him that from today onwards, if he dared to come to his residence again, he would be killed on sight. In addition, Zia Sui emphasized that it didn't matter if Xiao Zhao was looking for immortal weapons or whatever, but if he found someone from his clan dared to go down to the mortal world, he would destroy his whole clan. When Zia Sui was kneeling in Chen Pingin's yard, he felt the breadth of the Golden Plume Immortal Artifact. Fortunately, the senior did not blame him for it. Nevertheless, Xiao Zhao should be dreaming if he thought he could share the world with Zia Sui. Meanwhile, in the mortal world, specifically in the central city of Light's Shushan Immortal Academy, there was a commotion as a Confucian sage talent arrived. As everyone scrambled to get into position, a man entered the room and ordered them to keep quiet. Despite the presence of the Confucian sage talent, the man, who was the Shushan Immortal Academy Dean, proceeded to lecture the disciples about maintaining their composure. However, the disciples thought otherwise, considering that the Dean himself had shown up in the middle of his bath and was in no position to lecture them. After being called out, Sheng Guo Zemo presented himself. Upon seeing his talent, the Dean questioned if he learned from childhood or if a teacher had advised him. Zemo answered that he started learning at the age of 13. Moreover, he has consulted with Mr. Chen in the town for the past four years. He believes that Mr. Chen's knowledge is beyond the sky. In fact, he thinks that if Mr. Chen had cultivation skills, he would at least be immortal. The dean was curious and asked Zemo to read any poems Mr. Chen wrote as he had never heard of him. The dean did not know which wild man was lucky enough to pick up the talented treasure. He hopes Mr. Chen did not mess up the boy's chances. Right then, Zemo replied that Mr. Chen had written numerous poems. Therefore, he will read a poem that Mr. Chen gave him when he sent him off. Zemo started reciting the poem, and as a result, everyone who heard it felt their mind blown away to a mysterious place. However, Zemo stopped and was surprised to see the dean kneeling on the ground. Upon hearing the poem, the dean realized that the verse was profound and poetic, providing a vivid image of life with its vicissitudes. Consequently, he praised Mr. Chen for being worthy of teaching a Confucian sage talent and believed he was an incredible existence. The dean then asked Zemo where Mr. Chen lived and expressed his desire to pay him a visit soon. If possible, he wanted Mr. Chen to teach at the academy and even thought of making him the dean, rendering Zemo speechless. Finally, the dean grabbed Zemo's hand and departed to seek Mr. Chen. Meanwhile, Chen Pingin received a new task to create a new sect, and it must be named Pingin. Chen Pingin clenched the system notification and asked if it was messing with him. Despite the fact that he was previously asked to join the Mountain Sect, he was fortunate enough to be given a position of an ancestor by the Murong family. However, the system's new demand for him to create a sect made him angry. Although the system did not care and gave him a two-month deadline, he felt as if the system was obviously playing him to death. Realizing the gravity of the situation, he decided to ask the Murong family for a favor. However, before he could do anything, he heard someone calling him outside the courtyard. Curious, he opened the gate and was surprised to see Zemo, who had returned from the city earlier than expected. Zemo greeted Chen Pingan and introduced the dean, who was there to meet him. Chen Pingan was shocked when he realized that the dean was one of the top figures of the continent. The dean introduced himself as Jen of the younger generation, which left Chen Pingan astounded. As he looked at the dean, Chen Pingan noticed that the dean was another person sweating. He felt that the dean should not kneel if it hurt. He realized that he was not related to the Murong family, yet all the top figures knelt down to him and called him senior. Chen Pingan wondered when he had become invincible. Deciding to inquire about something from Dean Jen, Chen Pingan's aura looked menacing as he asked if he appeared to be very strong. The dean suddenly kneeled, begging for forgiveness. Chen Pingan was shocked, but he just urged the dean to tell the truth. The dean wondered if Chen Pingan was angry because his seclusion was disturbed. Additionally, he contemplated whether Chen Pingan had descended to teach a talented disciple and enjoy mortal life in seclusion. Moreover, the dean believed Chen Pingan calculated his intention to make him dean, which disturbed his seclusion. Nevertheless, since he is allowed to tell the truth, the dean answers Chen Pingan had no power at all, adding he could not sense even the slightest bit of cultivation from him. The dean informed Chen Pingan that he was perfectly mortal. Consequently, Chen Pingan felt hurt upon hearing others rub it in. However, the dean advised Chen Pingan not to be polite and to just go by the name Zhen Tang or Little Zhen. 
Despite the dean's suggestion, Chen Pingin declined his offer which made him very uncomfortable. Observing the situation, Zimo noticed the dean's hand shaking and asked if he was in pain. The dean responded by saying he had gained enough from the meeting and proceeded to fly away with Zimo. Before leaving, he bid Chen Pingin goodbye. Looking back, the dean noticed that Chen Pingin did not attack him and believed that Chen Pingin had let him off the hook. Fortunately, the dean knelt in time, otherwise, he would have faced unimaginable consequences for angering seniors. As the dean looked at Zemo, he suspected that Zemo was the reason he could escape and decided to focus on training him. Chen Pingin stared into the distance. As he reflected on the situation, he realized that Zemo had read the poems he taught to the dean. As a result, the dean thought Chen Pingin wrote them. This led the dean to conclude that he was some literature master and come to admire him. Chen Pingin decided to forget about it and, in turn, thought about how to complete the task given by the system. However, he did not know cultivation, so it seemed like a joke for him to establish a sect. Therefore, he made the decision to visit the town and buy some cultivation books. Later on, as Chen Pingin walked down a secluded alley, he finally arrived at the Thousand Book Store. Upon opening the door, he immediately voiced his intention to buy a book and called out for Boss Duan. Surprisingly, a woman closed her book and recognized him as Mr. Chen. Boss Duan warmly greeted him, remarking that it had been a while since he last visited her shop. In response, Chen Pingin greeted her back and asked about her business situation. As she stood up from her seat, she replied that things were the same as usual, and that she was just barely making it. She asserted that she was a weak woman trying hard to make an honest living by working tenaciously, so she really wanted to find a good family to marry. Chen Pingin replied that no one was worthy of Boss Duan, to which she asked who had decided on such a notion. Approaching him, she said that he was worthy, causing Chen Pingin to cough and blush in embarrassment as he suggested she should stop. He then asked if she had any books on cultivation with common methods, but she rebuked him for bringing up the books to change the topic and walked away. Chen Pingin wondered why he felt like Boss Duan had every book he needed. Suddenly, Boss Duan retrieved a book from the bookshelf and suggested that Chen Pingin read the name of her store carefully. The book was titled Cultivation for Dummies, and she generously gave it to him as a token of love, refusing to charge him. Delighted, Chen Pingin claimed that he would help her promote the place, but she declined the offer and simply asked him to come often. As Chen Pingin prepared to leave, he couldn't shake off the feeling that Boss Duan was giving him a familiar feeling. He was shocked and called out to her. Boss Duan then asked if he had changed his mind and if he was now willing to propose to her. Chen Pingin scratched his head as Boss Duan was joking again. Despite this, he appreciated her help and decided to invite her to his house. Boss Duan accepted his offer and mentioned that she would visit him if she had the chance. As Chen Pingin said goodbye and walked away, he couldn't shake off a strange feeling he couldn't explain. Meanwhile, Boss Duan watched him depart and muttered an apology as time was not upon them yet. She then snapped her fingers, and the Thousand Book store was illuminated with light. Finally, in a blink of an eye, the store vanished. Later in Chen Pingin's courtyard, he learned about cultivation and the countless opportunities and foods cultivators can use to enhance cultivation. He was shocked and jolted in his seat as he wondered what are the chances the Murong family and the others come because his meal increased their cultivation. However, by only eating Diba will there is a slight possibility of a breakthrough and he buys all the rice from the town. It appeared to him they only enjoyed his cooking as it may not increase cultivation, but it gave them a sense of satisfaction. Scratching his head, he resolves to confirm his theory with the Murong family, including the establishment of the sect. Suddenly, Murong Zhu called out from the outside which Chen Pingin finds a coincidence. She just came in time so he asked her if she could pass a message from him. In response, she was surprised Chen Pingin predicted her arrival and revealed she come to deliver news of Mountain Sect and Magic Moon Sect merging into a new sect under his name. Moreover, they would like to name it but if he did not like the plan, they will cancel it. Chen Pingin was in disbelief so Murong Zhu confirmed it was true and mentioned the entire sect would belong to him. He thought of a name and suggested the sect should be called Pingin, silently hoping it would not sound dirty. Surprisingly, Murong Zhu found it good, not expecting the senior would be willing to name it after himself. While it sounded like she wanted to flatter him, he felt they always feel good about everything he said so he found it strange. He asked Murong Zhu why they always call him senior while being very polite at the same time. Murong Zhu answered that it was because of his strong cultivation. However, she suddenly noticed she had misspoken. On the other hand, Chen Pingin replied that he was just a mortal. So, he questioned where the strong cultivation she was talking about was. Murong Zhu silently panicked as she realized she had forgotten about Chen Pingin's mind cultivation. At this moment, Chen Pingin saw her expression and felt like she would kneel down again. 
Therefore, he decided to stop despite not clarifying his doubts. Smiling, he asked her about the construction of the sect. Before she left, he invited her to eat. Nirong Zhu prostrated without warning. She declined his request and admitted they used to be greedy. Furthermore, she declared she had learned her lesson from the hidden sound stone and would never try to take advantage of opportunities again. As a response, Chen Pingan inquired if the chances she referred to were related to those meals, which made her feel petrified. She hurriedly ran away as she asked for forgiveness and reason she had something important to do, leaving Chen Pingan in confusion. He asked a bunch of questions that he felt like more significant problems but she only told him he was strong. Entering his house, Chen Pingan lamented if only he was really strong. Meanwhile, a twinkle appeared in the sky. A huge meteor from space can be seen streaking toward the mortal world. Like and subscribe for more.